right before we jump into this video, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list just yet, you can click on the screen right here or go over to fronosphoto.com, put your name in this orange box, put your email address in, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and I want to do my edit in Lightroom of this modest Yahoo shot in response to my good friend at Tutvid, uh, Mr. Nathaniel Dodson, who went ahead and did a full-on retouch from scratch. Now, sometimes when it comes to retouching, I would want to send my edit over, not just have him start from scratch and then take it a direction that he wants to go. He did his edit, and you can click on the screen at any time in the top left corner or at the end of this video to see his process in Photoshop of how he edited, or sorry, how he retouched, basically he edited, then retouched the image of Modest Yahoo. So this is kind of a Lightroom edit versus Photoshop edit, but maybe what I'll do is I'll do my edit and then send it over to him to be retouched and then turn to gritty so that it's more along the style of an image that I would put out there. But I wanted to see what he would do on his own, and that's what he did, and it's very cool. It may not be something that I like for how I would do my image, but that's why this is art and it's subjective. So let's see how I would edit this image of Modest Yahoo in the computer right here. So here's what we have here. We've got 1 3 20th of a second at F4, ISO 800, 200 millimeters with the 70 to 200 2.8 and the Nikon D4. It was before I sold my D4S. So this is flat. There is no editing done to this yet, but let's take a look at the lighting first and foremost. I used my Kino flows and what I'm going to call the Peter Hurley style of headshot making lighting. I set up three Kino flows. I've got two right here that are two by, uh, they're four foot by four footers. So there's four four foot bulbs in here on a triangle. And underneath I have one of the two foot thingy mobiles bobbers pumping the light up from underneath. Now you may be saying, why are you shooting at 800 ISO, Jared? Well, part of the reason is Modest has, his eyes were watering when I had it full on blast, full bright, where it was about 400 ISO or maybe even less, but it was hurting his eyes. So I cut, the, cut down on the power of the lights so that I could then basically cut down the power, meaning I needed to let more light in and compensate. So I just bumped the ISO because I liked my other settings. So that's how we got to this image. Now, what is one of the first things that I do when it comes to editing? I like to go down here to uh, the curves. I look at medium. In this case, I look at strong, and I like how strong it feels. That, to me, works. Another thing I like to do right off the bat is I go and I go Boomy McBoomerson. I boomify it, but don't go too far. Don't go too little. In my opinion, this is what I like to do. I just look at the screen. What works best for me? Somewhere around here looks pretty good so far. But doesn't it feel too yellow to you? So it feels too yellow to me, so I want to pull back. Somewhere around there looks to be about good. I can't even see the screen. I'm blind. So it's at 4888. That looks pretty nice in my opinion. So that looks good. You also have things to play with like the highlights. Exposure is going to stay the same because I think the exposure is spot on. I don't think there is much that I would do right here with messing with the exposure. But there are other things. You got your highlights. That gets rid of the highlights. Look at this. You see how that fills it all in? To me, this looks fake. I see a lot of people do this, and then they try to correct it in other places, and it's just like, well, that just got you back to the same place you were before. So I'm going to get rid of that. Going to bring the highlights back to here. Somewhere around negative 3, negative 5, negative 4. It looks to be about right. It's subtle. There's not much going on there. Uh, and then shadows. See, that gets rid of shadows. Look at the hair right around here. Got rid of them. And then there. You get it. You see how it just gets rid of everything? It, it just crushes it too much. Then this gets rid of too... See, this is too bad. Because anytime I see this, I know that that's not how it was. So I'm going to be subtle with this. This is just going to be a subtle bit right here. This looks to be about right... Right about there looks good. Whites is something I've been playing with lately. Uh, that's if you get rid of all of it. That's if you pump it up way too much. But what I found is that I like to brighten these instead of playing with the exposure and changing that. So I'm looking, what looks good? What works out? This looks to be about right. Right? That feels good. That feels good. But it feels a little green right now. Why is it feeling green? Because we're at negative 11 on the 10th. Let's see what zero does. Zero. Now, it may have a little bit of a magenta cast still going to it, but I prefer that than that. To me, that's a little too green. 
I mean, shit, it could be a little too magenta e, right? It could be a little too magenta e at this point. But let's see. Let's just go with something like negative two. That looks to be about right to me. Another thing I didn't touch yet was my blacks. I touched the white. The, I've touched whites. Now I'm going to touch the blacks. Too much, too much, too much. Too little, too little, too little, right? And the little bear says, let me go to something like this. It fills in. You see how it's coming to life? It's coming to life. Boom, 23. Let's see what zero was. Zero, right? But watch this. Watch it go boomy McBoomerson. I'm going to move this over for you. Boom. It comes to life. Let's see where we started. We started at flat, terrible, crappy. And we're getting working our way to right here. Remember, I'm doing this on a 27-inch iMac. So if anybody's out there, I'm uploading this at the uh, full-on resolution. So it's going to be like 1440 up there on YouTube. So we've got that. Clarity. Okay, I'm going to go with that. No, I'm not going to go with that. That's too much. Anytime, if you feel that it looks like this and it's too gritty and too hard, it definitely is. And this is too glowy McLowerson. It's like photos by Deb, right? Not too good. Not too good. So just a little bit here. Boom. I've got a general sharpening over here. I, don't, I just set it up a long time ago, and I've got that. Um, what, else, what else can we do here? Oh, yeah, there's something else. I love this. Look how nice the eyes are. You know, if you really, really wanted to, you could come in here. I'm going to go in even closer to one-to-one, on one to one, and I'm just going to do this, and I think that's going to be too much. And then you pull back. Doesn't that look too much to you? Too fake? I don't even want to mess with the eyes. I like the way that this is. I would deliver this. We'll talk about that in a second. But clarity right about there. You could play with this stuff. Ooh, vibrance and saturation, but I'm really not – I mean, I guess you could, just a little bit. Saturation, too much, too much. But let's go down here. Do you see how the background has a little grayish, bluish tint to it? That's because I had him far, a little far away from the background with no extra light back there to give me that bright white background. Something I can do down here in saturation is go, boom, goodbye white wall. Not goodbye yellow brick road, but goodbye white wall. If I wanted this, I could use this because there's no other blue or anything interfering with this image. If I wanted to get rid of red, that's where you're going to go into trouble. It looks like he's dead. He looks like he's got no blood running through his veins. So we've got that. But on the other side, I can add more of this. I can make it a more blue background. I think that's a little too harsh, but maybe something like this I don't hate. Eh, yeah, I like this. It looks good. But for this, I'd, maybe I'll just go with a little feeling of this blue. Just a little bit of... Uh, all right, I'm going to go with a lot of it. I like that feeling. I can't stop that feeling. Anyway, let's see what the uh, cla uh, vibrance could do if I want to pump it up a little bit. Too much, too much. Zero. Zero point zero. All right, I'll go with that. I think that this looks good so far. Um, my edit. Okay, sorry to interrupt myself here with this interjection, but I didn't like something about this image now that I'm looking at it. And it was, it just didn't, it, it's not right. It's too vibrant in the lips. The lips aren't right. It's, it's too much. The vibrance, I should never have gone to plus two. I'm going to go to minus 10 and it just pulls back a little bit. And I think it takes away that over vibrance that was there. His lips now aren't overpowering. Cause look, this is what it was before. Something about it's just not grabbing me right. So I'm going to leave it at that, pulling back a little bit to give me this result. So anyway, that's just why I wanted to tell you this. And, and, and again, with editing, your tastes change over time. But this is much better than the other one. So that's where that is. Uh, and back to the thing. I would then turn this over to a retoucher like Nathaniel to then take my DNG and then take it to another level. Um, what does plus two look like at the end here? I guess it is a little too much on the magenta E side. So I'm going to go back to zero. I'm going to split the difference and be zero. So let's get Nathaniel's up here on the screen. Actually, before we do that, that's where we started. That's where we finished. Nathaniel's is now up here on the screen. You can see both of them. To see his full edit, you could just click uh, on the screen right now over the Modest Yahoo photo to see how he did his retouching, or in essence, how he started at zero 
edited it how he thought he should do it, and then did his retouch. Mine is on the left, but you can click on his. You can see his 20-some-minute 20 minute, 20 some minute long video in Photoshop. So that's why this is kind of like I did this all in Lightroom. He did it all in Photoshop. You could do a combination of both. That's, you, you have the ability to do this. Photoshop's getting more powerful. Sorry, Lightroom's getting more powerful to let you do things like this. So that's what you've got. Um, I like my edit on the left. That's my personal opinion. I think this, this is too something over here, but but maybe I'm going to send him this DNG file and see how he would retouch it. And you see how he took out some blemishes down here? I left them. I leave them because they're people, and I don't do major extreme edits my, myself, but professionals out there do send things out to be retouched because retouchers can do a tremendous job with your photo if they don't take it to the extreme and go over the top. So, you can click over there on the screen to watch his edit. I recommend that you do do that to see Nathaniel Dodson's tut video, tut vid, edit on my channel that he did of this modest Yahoo photo. So there you have it. Photoshop, Lightroom versus each other. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya. Did you know there's a Fronos Photo podcast called Raw Talk? Well, there's 80-some episodes for you to check out and catch up on. Just go ahead and click on the screen. It's going to take you over to fronosphoto.com slash podcast where you can check out all of the fun and informative stuff that we do on that thing each and every week. There's a video and there is audio. So go ahead and check out Fronos Photo Raw Talk.